Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Nemeseek, and today we are continuing our breakdown of the first two trailers, the main trailer, I guess, our domestic trailer, and the international trailer, one with the uh, the fun song from the Four Non Blondes that a lot of people seem to not like, and then also the the second trailer, which I, I agree had a more somber and uh, tone-setting music, I think, uh, that matched up really well with the way that second trailer was cut. But that first trailer, I think, was cut to be more fun, I guess, in a way, almost like the the earlier Suicide Squad trailers, which I'm not really a fan. A lot of trailers nowadays, they put in some song for nostalgic reference to kind of rope you in that way. But there is a, a group of people out there that do connect with that and they like that. So that's why they keep doing it <laughs> for sure. And because it seems to be kind of effective in their marketing. But for me, I'm just like, ah, I'm just here for the story. I just want to know what you're doing differently about the story. The fact that you're combining the stories from Resident Evil 1 and 2 into one movie is interesting, and I was wondering how they could possibly do that since the events in the games take place about three months apart, and it seems Claire Redfield is the key to that because they're kind of making her the main character, and she has a, a past in Raccoon City where her and her brother Chris grew up here as orphans. Their parents were killed or, or are dead, and, uh, and they grew up in an orphanage in Raccoon City, the same orphanage from the second video game, the remake. So this is neat that this director got so involved in playing and, and looking at Resident Evil 2, the remake, uh, which was a big deal when that was coming out. Like, man, oh man, we were all so excited. And it turned out to be a really great game. I mean, there's definitely some criticisms I have of it that make it, uh, you know, not as good in some ways as the first game. Uh, but overall, it's really fun to play. I think I've beaten the game a dozen times. I think I got a pretty good speed run in that game too. And I'm not normally a speed runner, but, uh, but I, I have, I played that game every which way on every difficulty and everything. I, I loved the two remake. I thought it was very well done. So it's cool that this director took such inspirations from it. So in the last video, we broke down these trailers. I try to focus on images just from the, the, you know, that I think were inspired by the first video game. So in this one, we're going to talk about images that are inspired by the second video game. And there's so many, there's about 40 images here we're going to go through. So I'm going to try to go quicker this time since we have more stuff to cover. So without further ado, um, this is just a shot of Claire. We'll start here. This is her at the beginning of the trailer, but I don't think this is her at the beginning of the movie. I believe the, the director said in his breakdown, and I'll put a link to that video down below. If you want to check it out, Johannes Roberts broke down the, the first trailer, the domestic one. And, uh, and kind of gave his thoughts on it and told us a little bit more about the movie. And so I'm going to kind of regurgitate some of that here, but in case I, I miss something or misquote him or, you know, I'm not as accurate, definitely go check out his video. He did a really good job, uh, you know, breaking stuff down. So we have Claire here and she's riding her motorcycle, but this is not the beginning of the movie. I believe Claire begins the movie by coming in to Raccoon City by hitchhiking. And then I think she's going to take this motorcycle from Chris's house and use it to go to the orphanage. Um, at least that's my guess. Um, so uh, we'll get more, we'll talk more about that here in a second. I want to try to speed through these because uh, we have this image here where there's snipers. There's this guy with a helmet. I think it's like a, a hunk type agent on a roof and it looks like there's some on the ground. There's some military vehicles. So it looks like uh, this could potentially be the scene where the outbreak has started to happen and Umbrella is sending people in to steal the research from William Birkin. Uh, I'm going to guess that they're going to recreate that scene possibly with even Hunk in this movie. So that would be really awesome if we actually get a, a true Hunk cameo. Like, I mean, I know these guys are dressed like Hunk, but it would be neat if one of them actually was Hunk. Uh, that would be kind of cool. Um, so yeah, here you got this shot of, you know, kind of people, it looks like they're either trying to leave the city or, you know, they're coming up to some kind of checkpoint under the bridge and who knows, maybe they get killed or maybe these are, you know, guys in their trucks, kind of like the Romero movies where they're like, hey, we'll help you, you know, like we're a militia or something, uh, or we're just concerned citizens, and we have guns, and we want to help you, you know, clear out the city. I don't know, maybe that's something, but it seems like there's a couple cars, and they're pulling up, and it looks like the road is blocked. So I'm going to guess this is, you know, trying to contain the infection type scene. Uh, but this is cool, because this is Claire and Leon, and they're at the orphanage, and it looks like they open up a secret door. So that's cool that there's still secret doors in this world, you know, because that's a very Resident Evil thing. And so uh, so this is a secret door in the orphanage that has the umbrella logo on it. So that's, that's a very obvious secret door, <laughs> I guess. But uh, but that's cool. So then we have this close-up of Leon here looking at, you know, something. I don't know. I don't know where this takes place, but uh, I just thought it was a good shot of Yvonne, um, you know, looking worried or concerned of what they're, what they're seeing. 
Uh, this is the truck driver, and you can actually see his eyes mutating. But also in the background, you can see his dog, and his dog looks like he might be mutated as well. So my theory is that the one dog we see in the trailer is is this guy's dog. So it looks like the truck driver, when they hit the woman in the beginning of the you know the, the next trailer, and we'll go over that shot here coming up in a little bit, I think his dog gets out, or we see his dog get out and lick the blood. And then I think the dog gets infected. And then I'm guessing he drops Claire off. And then on his way, you know, th uh, through town, um, he's like, he actually, you know, crashes because his dog bites him and infects him. So, and then the dog probably escapes the truck. And uh, when this guy flips the truck over, and then that's why the dog ends up at the police department in the parking garage. So I'm thinking we're just going to see this one dog infected in the movie. And that's why there's not dogs chasing the uh, you know, a alpha team out in the woods. So that would make sense. So here's the truck flipping over really great recreation from the video game. I think they did a good job here, even though the police department seems like it's a little more secluded than it was in the video game. Um, but that's because the location they filmed this in. So it's not going to be a hundred percent accurate, although they try to make the building look accurate. But if you ever see the behind the scenes footage of this, which we went over in previous episodes, the archway that says RPD, that's there, but that building behind it, is not. I mean, there is a building behind it, but it's like has like like artwork or graffiti or something on it, and it's like a abandoned building or it's it's like an office building that I don't know. It doesn't look like that. So they so it looks like they just took the archway and they just CGI'd in a different building in the background to look more like the police, uh, you know, the police department. So yeah, just a cool shot though. Uh, this is Ben Bertolucci. So I couldn't pinpoint who the actor was when I saw the trailer. I knew I, I thought I it seemed like I recognized him from the IMDb because I I was just like oh there's a guy that you know, has a red, he's got red hair and he's got a red beard. He's, but he's not Barry, I don't think. And that's all I could remember. So I couldn't remember if, if this was the same actor. So I did a, a, you know, side by side comparison and I'm like, oh, okay, this is the guy, uh, Josh, I think his name is, is playing Ben Bertolucci. And it looks like Ben is, you know, a journalist or some kind of conspiracy theorist guy who knows Claire and he believes her stories and has been doing research over the years. And now he's asking Claire, I think something bad is happening here in Raccoon City and I might need you to come back and help me expose it. So, um, so I'm wondering if we're going to see Ben in this as like a zombie or if he'll be in the police department. Cause I think we see a zombie in one of the jail cells. So I'm, I'm curious, but if not, I mean, this is, it's just cool that they squeezed in Ben in this too. Uh, cause again, just another character. Um, but the, a character that is acts like the character, I think the previous Resident Evil movies, I didn't like too much. Because they would call someone, they'd be like, oh, this is Chris or this is that. But they, those characters wouldn't really act like their characters. And at least this one, it's like, okay, his name's Ben. He's a journalist and a conspiracy theorist. Like, uh, that's that's cool. That's in keeping with the character. Here we have Donald Logue, who's playing Chief Irons. Chief Irons, uh, according to the director, is a little different in this movie. He's not as much of a creeper as he in the game as he is in the games when he's like stuffing young women uh, after they die. Like he's got a really creepy thing about stuffing animals and then stuffing people. And he's a weird weirdo, and he helped the orphanage like experiment on kids and stuff in the Resident Evil 2 remake. So he's definitely a creepy guy. It sounds like in this movie. He's not a good guy, uh, but he's also not like a villain villain. He's just a guy who's turned his uh, you know, eye to a lot of the bad things that have happened. So he's just kind of like a, an indifferent guy, try to keep his head down um, and not pay attention to the horrible things going on or not wanting to address them in fear of losing his job. And now apparently he's a couple weeks away from retirement in this movie and all this goes to hell. So it, it seems like he might not actually... If he's on Umbrella's payroll in this movie, it's not. It's just to turn a blind eye to stuff, not uh, so much to, um, you know, to do creepy things, I guess. So, uh, so that's interesting. That's a different take on him for sure. So we'll see if that's true or if that pans out in the movie. Maybe the director's just trying not to spoil anything. So we'll see how that works out. Um, this is Sherry Birkin. She looks like she's hiding in the corner, you know, covering her mouth. Um, who knows what she's seeing? I'm thinking maybe she's seeing her dad transform, uh, but I don't know. It could be something else as well. Uh, this is just zombies busting through after the, the wrecked vehicle of uh, the truck driver and all the zombies look like they're coming through. Cause I think the, I think when they show the explosion, it, it pushes the gates open a little cause Leon seals the gates at one point in one of the trailers. But, uh, yeah, so these zombies breaking through and running in, that's, it's just a cool shot. It's really well done with the fire in the background. We have another one here with William Birkin, the G monster or the G, you know, G type or whatever it's called. And uh, I, I, most people like myself, when they did the trailer reactions, they were like, what is that thing? Like, I don't know what it is. And I didn't know what it was when I first saw it. Uh, and then later on after the trailer reaction, I was like, 
I let me go back and look at that shot. And I did, and I was like, oh, it's got eyes on the shoulders, and uh, it's got a white top of his head with the red eyes. So I think that's supposed to be G-Type 3 from the game, uh, right before he goes into dog form. Uh, so I was like, maybe that's what it's supposed to be, but the CGI is really rough in this. And now, of course, I've seen, you know, worse CGI. I think a lot of people, they were saying like, oh, this movie looks low budget. It looks like a bad, you know, uh, made for TV movie and stuff. I'm like, well, I, I encourage you all to go watch the trailer for the new Day of the Dead show. Um, and that is definitely low budget and bad <laughs> and uh, cheesy and, uh, and campy and stuff. And, and some of it not in a good way. Um, hopefully it turns out to be a good show. Like I'll check it out. But uh, but I'm, I am concerned when I saw the trailer. But that one looks really cheap. This has a budget. You can tell it has a budget. But I think that's just used in some of the wrong places i feel and that's always the key to movies is uh, you want to if you have a budget you want to use it wisely so i think building cool sets getting actors that don't cost nearly as much but you know hopefully still deliver you know i think that's all smart filmmaking but uh but then you, of course you have to get down to a scene where you have to do cgi and this is just man this is this is looking rough here <laughs> this is one of the shots in the the trailer i think most people will, will agree it doesn't look that good, but it's fine. I mean, I'm, I'm not really, when I think of Resident Evil, you know, sure, I would like it to look a little bit better or the monsters be more practical. That's my thing is I would like them to be more practical. But um, for this shot, I guess it would be really hard to do this practically where the monster rips through the, the tram. So th hopefully this is just the one bad shot of the character and and uh, they ha hopefully they have better shots. <laughs> I don't know. But this is in the trailer. So uh, usually you try to put your best stuff in the trailer. And to me, I'm like, oh, man, if any other shot you should have put in the trailer for this monster besides this one. Um, but still, yeah, I, I wanted to comment on that because a lot of people were, were thinking that I, I loved every shot in this trailer. And it's like, no, that's not true. This is one of the shots I don't like. So then we have here, we have Birkin infected. So I'm thinking so that the walls behind him match kind of where Sherry was. So I'm thinking this could be where he gets killed and where he infects himself. So I'm thinking maybe him and his wife, Annette, get sh maybe both get killed in this scene. Um, I don't know if Annette will have a big part in it. We do see a shot of her later, but um, so I don't know what's, what's going to happen. But I think maybe Sherry's left alone. And like I said before, um, with the theme of this movie being about Claire and that, that she knew Lisa Trevor when they were kids and now Lisa's a monster... Maybe this is why also she takes an interest in saving Sherry beyond just, hey, there's a kid and we got to save her. I think it's like a redemption for Claire. Like, oh, I, I left Lisa and Chris and everyone and now Lisa's a monster and I feel like I, you know, I need I need to do right by them in some way. And maybe seeing Sherry is like, OK, this is the young girl I can save since Lisa was the young girl I couldn't save. So that's at least that's my thought process. I don't know if the movie will be that deep but we'll we'll see i guess um but yeah so this is just a shot of birkin and he's been killed and and it looks like he's infected uh so i'm guessing he injected himself uh around this time and now he's going to turn into the g monster and then we got this shot of the liquor which i saw some people complaining about too i mean of course everyone has personal tastes of what they you know how they envision these creatures to be put into the movies uh, the, the liquor in the first Resident Evil movie by Paul Anderson, I thought was done pretty good, even though it was mostly CG. I thought it was done really well and, and a little bit more accurate in some regards. But I do like the the grotesqueness of this one. Like the brain is bigger than the, the head almost, like which is really neat looking. And the, the teeth look crazy and it looks like the, the tongue will come out here soon. And we'll have another shot. Actually, I'll put it in right here. Um, th this next shot here shows someone, it looks like walking up behind the liquor and maybe hitting it in the back of the head or blowing its brains out. Or I don't know what, but it, something's coming up behind it. And so uh, I guess we can begin speculation of what that is or who that is um, in the comments down below. So this shot here is from the beginning of the tr second trailer, the um, the international one, where it's uh, the truck and you see the dice in, you know, hanging from the, the rearview mirror. Uh, this is a cool shot because it reminds me of Silent Hill. So I just wanted to include it. <laughs> but it's the scene where Claire is hitchhiking in. Um, and this is the the lady they hit, who I think is wearing a white coat. Um, so she could be from the Arclay facility. So for all we know, this highway that they're using to come into town is passing, you know, kind of the Arclay mountain area. And then obviously the truck driver drops her off at Chris's house, which looks like it's on the outskirts of town, which then would make sense um, when Claire goes into downtown on the motorcycle looking for the orphanage. So, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just, I like thinking of the geography of, of Raccoon City because uh, it's a, it's such a cool setting for a, for a horror story. Like, they did a really good job 
establishing it in the second and third video games in, in the original ones that I, I just really like the setting of Raccoon City. But yeah, here you see the shot of the, the person who got hit and it looks like they're wearing a white lab coat. So I'm guessing they're a scientist from the Arclay facilities, possibly. Uh, here we have Sherry Birkin being woken up by her dad coming in to say, hey, we got to go now. I think it's because he knows the outbreak has happened and he knows Umbrella is going to be sending people like Hunk in to get his virus, like, you know, his, his version of the virus, his G virus. So he's like, I don't want to hand over my life's work. So look, you know, let's go to my lab. Let's get my stuff and let's get out of here. That's what I'm guessing. Uh, this is obviously chief irons and Claire and Leon, and they're all at the police department. So I'm guessing this is where Claire runs into Leon or meets Leon. Uh, I don't know. It'll be nice if they meet outside of this place because he's wearing his RPD vest there. Uh, you know, Leon is, and we see in one of the other trailers, one of the other shots that Claire hands that vest to him when they're like rummaging for weapons. So that scene could happen right before this scene where they're in the back grabbing weapons and stuff. But uh, yeah, so I just thought it was a cool shot of the three of them because they're all Resident Evil 2 characters. And then another shot here with, with them readying up, which, you know, Claire, I don't know what her life's been like since she ran away from the orphanage, but clearly she feels confident rocking a shotgun. And that, that's awesome because shotguns have some massive kick to them. Um, but Leon there with his hand the way he's holding the gun is is identical to the video games. That's really cool. Yeah, it looks awesome. Um, this shot here of the parking garage is really cool. And I like these wide shots a lot. I think Johannes does a great job fitting a lot in the frame, but also fitting a lot of like, you know, ominousness in the frame. Uh, this is a really cool shot of the parking garage. And you see the little ramp back there going up, very reminiscent of the second remake video game, which is really cool. And then another shot here of him calling out to Vickers, you know, through the through the radio uh, with that cool city of raccoon city map behind him, which I think is pretty accurate to the game, but I, I or it could just be something they, I don't know. It's been a while since I've seen the map from the third res evil, the original one. It's been a while since I've seen that map. So it might not be as accurate, but it just, it looks cool because it's a map, you know, and that's very, you see that in the video games like, Oh, there's a map hanging on the wall. Well, there's a map hanging on this wall. It's framed. It looks awesome. <laughs> so that's, that's cool. They have that shot there. Um, and then it's, you actually see irons, and Leon back there in the background and Claire turning around to look at something behind them and she's raising her shotgun. So I don't know if this is the liquor scene or, or leading up to it or if zombies start coming in. And I wonder if Marvin will be here. I, you know, I was wondering about that. Like I was thinking, well, we, we didn't see in the last video. I mentioned that Kenneth was the stars member that was eaten by the first zombie that Chris comes across in the video game or Jill. And I, I, but it didn't look like that's what the zombie was chewing on. It didn't look like it was chewing on a, a Kenneth or a stars member, but I don't know. It could be, could be wrong. We might, might find out we're wrong about that. But then now Marvin, I'm like, where, you know, is, is Marvin in the police department at all? Is he wounded? Is he sitting in a room like helping them or something like that would be cool. I, I hope Marvin is in this because I don't, we haven't seen a Marvin adaptation in any of the previous movies either. So that would be cool to see Marvin, but I, I didn't see him on the INDB. So I'm guessing not. Um, and speaking of, you know, budget and stuff, they have enough money for a rocket launcher. So this is cool. You have Leon there lifting the rocket launcher. They're clearly in the tram and in the, in the vehicle that the G monster tears through the roof on. So I'm guessing that that's what this is. They're moving car to car, out, trying to outrun the creature. And this is Leon, I think, squaring up with that rocket launcher, which is cool. And this is a shot of him firing it. And you see the missile coming right at the screen. So yeah, that's just neat. And everything sparking up behind him, which is cool. Because, yeah, when you fire a rocket, uh, stuff projects out the back of it, too. <laughs> so, yeah, really well done. Good effects, I think. Um, but that's it. Yeah, that's. Uh, we, I think we made it. Hopefully, we kept it under 20 minutes. There was a lot more photos in this one than there were in the, the last one. So, uh, I just thought this was cool. And then any remaining photos that I grabbed that I, I missed out on that might include, you know, should have been included in this video or the previous one, I'll try to squeeze those into the next video. But if there's any shots here that you saw that um, that you liked or anything you saw in the trailer that I didn't cover that is Resident Evil 2 inspired, you know, let me know down below. And like I said, if you think it, you know, maybe hang off too for the next video because the next video I do cover some things that look like they're from Resident Evil 2, but because they have both Chris and Claire in them or characters from Resident Evil 1 and 2 in them, that's why I combined them for the next video. So, so you know, maybe save, save some room for that too. But, um... But yeah, these are great to do. I love doing breakdown videos and I love theorizing and stuff about what we might see because for me, it's all about story for these, you know, adaptations. Um, even if it's not 100% accurate to the games, I, as long as they're trying to tell a neat story, 
um, uh, I get interested. And the fact that they're combining Resident Evil 1 and 2, I find very intriguing because I think that that can go either way. It can be really good or it could be of just an a- absolute train wreck. Uh, and I think that'll depend on the runtime for this movie and, and kind of what characters they decide to focus on. So we'll hopefully learn more about that soon. The movie's coming out in about, you know, six weeks or seven, no, about eight weeks, I think. Yeah, seven or eight weeks. So we got a little less than two months before the two, uh, you know, before the movie comes out because it comes out Thanksgiving here in the U.S. So yeah, about like, you know, six, seven weeks away. So that's not too long. So hopefully we'll get some more stuff here soon to talk about. But until then, I'll definitely do one more breakdown video for you guys and get that up immediately. So again, let me know your thoughts down below and we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in Raccoon City. Peace.